the place was going up in smoke, God forbid, this is my treasure. Now, when we're beachcombing, these are the sorts of things we might pick up. There are things like this chap. That's a beautiful head, you know. Look at that. Fabulous. Wonderful knot. Wonderful eye. Look at that. That's a kind eye. That's not quite as kind, but it's still pretty good. This is my absolute treasure chest here. Not many people get to see this. This interests me because you look at it from that side and it is pretty unremarkable. You wouldn't pick that up, but you turn it over and it's got, it's a sort of drawing of a bird's head that you might get in Native American Indian folklore. Um, I love the names of American cars from the, from the 50s and 60s. Pontiac, Thunderbird, Chevrolet. They're great, great names. But I can imagine that, you know, Pontiac Chieftain or something like that. That's got, that's got such power, this proud brow and the, it's got a very defiant eye. I love Inuit art. That's those people have nothing, the hardest, harshest life they lead, and they can produce a creature from one piece of bone or horn. And, you know, to achieve that, that's, that piece of material is, is, fires my imagination, makes, makes me appreciate that, that sort of work and makes me strive. I think that's fabulous. That might be a little bird's head. Now you might, you might, you might think I've completely lost the plot here, but that is a piece of dried seaweed from Tresco. Look at this piece of wood. There's a, that's where the little head would go. Look, look, see what I mean? It's starting to come alive. I'll put that on a, on a piece of wire, like that. You know, what more do you need? It's fabulous. Fabulous. And my big responsibility, as I say, is not spoiling any of this, you know. I've got to, I've got to show it absolutely to the, the best, more than the best of my ability to preserve and to share it with somebody else. That's, that's a burnt piece, but it's majestic, that. That is absolutely fantastic. That beak, perhaps he's chewing on something that side, I don't know. Or maybe he needs to go to the dentist, he's got an abscess. Anyway, I still think it's great, it's powerful. That, slightly raised up like that, that gives, that's attitude. That's the other thing. I don't understand about the science of birds, I don't understand, you know, that aspect. It's posture, attitude, behaviour coping with the elements, communication. That's, that's what I'm interested in. We get to the coast every, every three weeks and then we are diligent. I'm on that beach first thing for breakfast and I have to have my breakfast otherwise I'm, I've only got a little engine so if I don't stoke it I'm in trouble and I don't mind whether the weather's rough that doesn't bother me when it's wet it, it is more difficult because co colors and textures don't stand out everything kind of goes a dark gray or if not black your glasses get splashed you can't see through your glasses the wind makes your eyes water so your tears run you can't work into the sun. You've got to have the sun behind you, otherwise you're just, you're just blinded. You, you know, you're looking so intently. Um, you know, Picasso said, you, you, can't, you, you cannot look, you have to just find. That's okay, that, that's, that's fine. But I don't paint, so, <laughs> sod Picasso, I'm gonna go and look as well. <laughs> Help! 
There's his hand waving at the bottom of that pool and it looked really frightening. <laughs> Davy Jones locker. Oh mate, I suppose they're that way around, aren't they? In the caves, 30,000 years old that is. Here the oyster catchers. Getting ready for supper. How does that wash up? I mean, we understand driftwood, and we understand plastic, I suppose, but how does that not just sort of sink to the bottom without trace? That is gonna be a really lovely stem. I'll put a little bird on top. Anyway, that's great. When our wonderful son Louis was uh, seven, he started a conservation project called Arcworks. And um, to mark his idea, I made him this, which was supposed to be an arc, uh, from four pieces of scrap on the beach. And um, I'm very pleased I, I hung on to it because who would have known the wonderful adventure and story that was about to unfold? So there it is uh, for Louis, who may be small, but is determined to make a difference. Uh, an arc for Arcworks, 2002, 10 years on. Great. It looks as seaworthy now as it didn't then, but it gave a lot of fun. So that was my first boat. And then, humour's always played a big part in what I do. And quite a lot of my boats have sold, sailed off into the distance, but one that I kept was the Lusitania. And, um, as the very knowledgeable Mr. Sam Llewellyn says, this is the closest I get to Marcel Duchamp and his urinal. This is my half a wooden lavatory seat. And this is a bit of sheep's wool from Radnor Valley. Getting the engine going. Toot toot. So there we are, that's the Lusitania. doesn't get better than this. Might be, a, you know, anywhere in the world, you might get, you get a good alternative, but can't be better than this. And you know it's a safe place because look at the state of these rocks. These birds need some toilet paper. They're, they're absolutely white. So this is where we came. Well, actually, it wasn't this far. It was it was in a little bit. And we looked across to the village with that backdrop of mountains, Snowdonia National Park behind this range. Coast goes up. You can't see, you can't really see it, but there, right out there, I, and there I can see that is the top of the Thlin Peninsula. That is this wonderful curve of the northern half of West Wales. So all the prevailing northwesterlies and westerlies are delivering all this material twice a day. And then down there, you can't see it, but there'd be a similar arm. So there's Cardigan Bay like that. And Sid's right in the middle with Joe and Louie. Come to me. Come to me. So anyway, yeah, that's where we looked and we thought it was this little modest 70s terraced house. 
and we thought we'll buy it. And this is our garden. So that was a bit of luck we bought that little place. Look at those clouds, that wonderful cloud there. Yeah. Don't need to go far, do I? I think this is a fabulous bird. I've had this bird for years. And um, it has got the most wonderful head. When, and when I say things like wonderful and beautiful and fabulous, it's not what I've done, it's what is I think of my work as a celebration a celebration of what the natural elements do to man-made and organic material. It is fabulous. Look at this. Wings, tail feathers, very uplifting. I really love that piece. I think that's fantastic. And not what I've done, what the sea's done. Okay. these. Oh, these are unlikely bits of bird. You've got to take my word for it. I dream of a studio with straight walls, not having to get under the eaves all the time. What fun. Oh, look at this. Wow. Goodness me. That, I think, that may become... Yeah, if I can put a, that round the neck of a bird and then a, the head, you know, they have rough, some of these birds, especially the, I mean, the birds of paradise. Fantastic. And that is the other thing. That's the main thing about what I do. You know, nature does the most extraordinary things. I can't do anything too unlikely because nature has already done it. And a blooming sight better than anything I can come up with. But there you are. Inspiration. What's that? Another fantastic piece. Oh, I can see a bird there. Hunched. Yeah. Head there. Feet. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't want to cross that one when I've finished. Look at this. Some sort of courtship display. That's fabulous. Wow. Wish I'd had hair like that. <laughs> when I was a teenager. <laughs> oh, great. This is my treasure. This is what my grandmother taught me. You know, look, there I am. Not one years old. And she would say, look for a bit of pencil, ducky. And so, because I used to look for bits of pencils. I mean, I had hundreds of little bits of pencil. But she was teaching me to use my eyes and uh, and to be imaginative and yeah so oh i always had boxes of you know little skulls and that's what look at those bird skulls up there i look at those and i think god what elements did those creatures survive in what did they see wow fabulous no this is you know, I'm not wealthy, but there's nobody richer than me. I love all these um, little cameos you're getting of wildlife, because that's what glues our time here together. We just tiny bit players in this active out daily life of all these wild creatures. All this is a gift, so, you know, we know that provided we wake up, every morning it's here, it rain or shine. But just to come and prove to yourself that it's still all here, it's just absolutely magical. 
So it's a sense of being alive, being a free spirit, and feeling, you know, how, how lucky we are to be able to spend time in such a place. And all, all this to explore. Look, it's going on. Some great, fantastic metropolis of tiny homes and all these little lives going on. Amazing. And you, you only need to take a little tiny part of it and you've got, you've got pleasure and entertainment hours. And look at it all. How can you do it justice? It's fantastic. I pinch myself, but you know, I'm gonna wake, not wake up, and it's all been a dream. It's just all the time, that wonderful, soothing sound. Sun sparkling on the water. Wonderful. If I was going to save two boxes, I had to, for some reason, leave the building once and for all. I would have to take, these are my bird heads, which represent 10 years beach combing. And these are, are bodies which are absolutely, to me, exceptional. And I'm very, very slow to commit to a composition. I can come over here any evening and offer a head to a body and, and it would work. It's a nice little head, very simple, eye both sides, but is that the very best? And I've got to be seriously convinced that I am giving that material the very best of my attention. Otherwise I won't commit to it. Because believe me, this is serious treasure. Serious currency, folks. Here's a bit of wood. I would have been able to use that at one time. Well, this is an example of what I might almost have used. Sid hurtles into the 21st century. Hello? Hello? Mr. Obama? I'm really busy. Yes. Well, I'm pleased your economy is making a bit of a comeback, but we are seriously busy here, beachcombing and recording our humble activities. So I'll make sure you're invited to the show. Yep. Many thanks for calling. And you. Bye. President Obama. Amazing technology. I wish he wouldn't call when I'm not in the office. Right, this is an example uh, of what I might have used because it's got good eye definition. It's, I think, this is a piece of old breakwater. It's that sort of very stringy reddish wood. It's probably mahogany or teak going back. Got a lovely eye, but it's it's too crude and since I've been making seriously for 10 years now it almost almost is as much of a challenge what what you don't use as what you use because you've got to keep improving and improving not just your own imagination but the quality of the material uh, it sounds terribly heartless to throw a piece of 
of beautiful wood away that's sea-worn like that, but I'm sorry, it's not up to standard. But I wanted you to see, you know, if that hadn't broken off, it's pleasantly rounded. You can see it on a big bird, maybe. It's just not good enough. So there we are. We'll leave it for Neptune to pick up when the tide comes in. I used to be sort of horrified finding the remains of fires on the beach because very often the material that was left was, was A, useless, but B, uh, totally unsightly and poisonous to the environment. But I've, I've learnt to salvage burnt material and, and I use these pieces in my pictures. I'm not a colourist, but I can see the fabulous colours and textures and shapes that evolve through the destructive force of a fire and litter. So if I can turn that into something interesting, uh, that's wonderful, that gives me a real buzz. When you see a boiling sea and crashing against rocks and things, look, this is a miniature version. Fantastic. Sometimes I get these and they've got pebbles. I'll show you something in a minute that's, that's really exactly as I'm describing. Look at the colours in that. Fantastic. I might chicken out and use it that way up because it's, it's, it's the spume, isn't it, and the surf left after the waves have gone over the rocks. But I'll, I'll hope to be brave and use that. It's whipped up sand. It's, ah, great stuff. Look at that. That is the remains of a flip-flop. The colour. So what I might have to do is a picture involving a coral, the, the Great Barrier Reef maybe, <laughs> in West Wales plastic. Great. I like a challenge. This is quite an old one, but I think it's the shaft, the metal shaft from a spade. And it had these, had these eyes, and I, so I call that El Toro. You know, you see those posters, uh, they're always red and yellow, encouraging you to go to Spain. And the bulls, they're always leaning forward and pawing, clouds of dust snorting. Look at his, I can hear that one. Terrifying. <laughs> and if you want to get really scary, there's these two characters. I don't know whether they should go together or what. I'll make a bit of space first of all. This is called the big fight. Uh. In the red corner, the champion. <laughs> don't know what his name is. <laughs> oh, there's a funny one. Got to look at them both sides because some are happy, some are sad, some are defiant. A lot of birds have most extraordinary combs and plumes and like the hornbill. I mean, look at that piece of wood. I had to use that piece of wood, hadn't I? You know, look at that. What a fabulous piece of wood. I've been a bit serious, so now I'm going to be a bit dark. This is the yellow booted dumbstruck. <laughs> You're allowed to laugh. I do think of myself as a, amongst other things, a cross between a dating agency and a scrap man, so. <laughs> so 
So we beach comb mainly on the west coast of Wales and a particular shoreline that we work at, middle of Cardigan Bay. And at low tide, the remains of an ancient forest emerge, oak, birch, alder. And um, it's quite fantastic. You, you see these wonderful shapes stick up. Seven or eight years ago, this piece of wood washed up. And it, it was drying out here for about three years. You can't rush drying out. Things split, fracture, just disintegrate. And I'm so pleased that this, this managed to stay intact. I think what's left of hundreds and hundreds of years of wear. And I didn't know how to use it for a long time. And I'm almost ashamed to say at one stage, I was just gonna put one little boat on this great big wave, like Hokusai, the wave. I think instead of that, the bird will be pleased. I, I decided to make that the wave. So that's my homage to Hokusai. 300 images of Mount Fuji. And this backboard, look at those colors. Anyway, I digress. So I saw a film of Capercaillie's courting and uh, they're very important. The male's terribly important, typical male. Little legs, throw their heads back, chest out, strut, the whole business. And I thought that's my, that's my piece of wood. And, um, and then I found this very, very slender head. It had a hole in, uh, so I simply introduced the pebble. So there we are, courtship display. I can't think of anything more pleasurable than to go for a walk with my wife and son and be open to what the tide has delivered. And if through that work, it's hard to call it work because it's such a pleasure, if through that activity, shall we say, I can cause people to smile and laugh, be moved, and bring about that connection with, with the real world, the wild world and, and nature, then, then that's my reward, then I'm happy. That's, can't ask for much more than that. And then I come back and do it again, which is even better. So, for me, I mean, it's a bit blowy today, but you get in the dunes and get your head down. Before long, you've drifted off. Wake up to bird song or hunger. Well, that's a good thing. Healthy appetite brings you, really brings you alive, absolutely, like nothing else, yeah, so, this is my place, wonderful.